We have to move on from simple interest to compound interest. And Okay, so let's take a look at how compound interest works. First, let's do a little review of talking about how we use the multiplier in percent problems. Multiplier is what I call the shortcut. And that's the number you have to multiply the original amount by to increase or decrease by a certain percentage. I refer to it as the shortcut. So we would add the percent increase to 1. So let's say it was, for example, 5% sales tax. The multiplier, what we multiply by, is 1.05. We're paying 100% for the item plus 5% tax. To decrease, we would subtract that percentage. So if there was a 5% discount, we're paying 95%. Now, how does this work with compound interest? Well, first, let's define compound interest for your notes. You work out the interest on the first period, you add it to what you had to start with, and then you calculate the interest for the next period, and so on, and so on. So basically, you're earning interest on interest. When we have those successive percentage increases or decreases, we can actually multiply the multipliers. I didn't tell you that little tidbit a couple days ago. So for instance, an increase of 10% followed by an increase of 5% would be a 1.1, that's my multiplier for the 10%, times a 1.05, and that gives us a grand total multiplier of 1.155. That's a shortcut on my shortcut. This also works for a decrease, so if I had a 20% decrease followed by a decrease of 10%, my multiplier would be 8.8 by 0.9. So let's take a look at the example that you've been given. To find the compound interest on a $3,000 investment for two years at 5% per annum. That means per year. It could say annually or it could say per annum. The first way to solve this is by filling out a table. So I'm going to look at the first year where I had $3,000 and I got 5% for that first year. So if I work that out, because I know it's one year so I'm just multiplying that by 5%. So I get $150 and then I, my principal's going to increase by that $150. So then I take 5% of $3,150, which gives me $157.50. So the compound interest in the year two would be $157.50. The total interest earned is $307.50. Our second example states that $4,000 is invested at 3% per annum compound interest. Find the total value of the investment after two years. You can neglect that bottom year three. But be careful, this one's asking a different question. It does not want to know what the interest was, it wants to know the total value. So here you might want to try the multiplier shortcut because you're getting the total value of that $4,000. So you can try this on your own or you can stick with me. If you'd like to pause here and give it a shot, that might be a good idea. So the way I look at this is in year one, there's $4,000 times 1.03. That's my multiplier and I get 4120. In year two, I take that 4,120 and multiply that by 1.03 and that gives me a final total value of 4,243. Now, you're saying, well, why didn't we use that multiplier on multiplier? You could have and you should. Check it right now on your calculator to see and you should get the same answer. Now there is a formula down there in your notes. This is kind of crazy, so let's see what it says. The formula to calculate compound interest is A equals P times the quantity, 1 plus I to the N. P is your principal, as it always is. I is the interest rate as a decimal. And N is the number of periods. Now in this case, as opposed to our I equals PRT, we're going to get our total amount. Okay, we're not going to get just the interest. So you need to be very careful when you're using one formula versus the other of what the actual result is. And then it gives you for a decreasing value you would just subtract. And I think you have an R there. It really doesn't matter, but yours is a little inconsistent. So why don't you change your R to an I? 
So let's start with an example. 14,000 is invested at 9.25% per annum compound interest. Find the total amount at the end of three years. Now the per annum means annually. It could also say annually, per year, per annum. They're all the same thing. So we're going to use our formula which says we're going to take our principal times 1 plus our interest rate to the power of however many years we have and that will give us our total amount which is what we're trying to find here. So I plug that in already having added my rate plus 1 and in your calculators what you're going to do is you're basically going to put it in just like this. You can put in the 14,000 and you can put in parentheses 1.09 Two, five. And then you use that little hat key. That says to the power of. That's another symbol used in math to indicate powers. And three. And conveniently, your calculator knows that this goes first because exponents come before multiplication. Okay, PEMDAS. So we can go ahead, move forward, and it should give you the total amount. You could have alternately used a table. A table takes a little bit more time, but it is very descriptive for those of you who like to see it out in writing. The final amount you should get is $18,255.44, no matter which way you do it. So you, this is like taking it one step at a time. Now I'm going to skip forward and do decreasing value for you, and then I'm going to leave the rest for you on your own, and I will post the answers. So let's take a look at number three, since that's a decreasing value, and that would be a little bit different. My decreasing percent is 20%, so I'm going to still use the same formula. That should be a subtract in there. So go ahead, and I'm sure you're using it, but for some reason I didn't change that formula. So that's 1 minus i to the n power. And if I go forward, I did calculate it correctly. I just didn't write it correctly. So that's 74,500 times 0.8, which is 1 minus i to the n, and that's to the second power. So I calculate that on my calculator, or I can do it manually. In any case, I get $47,680. I could have also done a table, step by step and you should get the same answer. So at this point, I think you should work on the rest of those on your own. I will post the answer keys one through six. Seven is something I would like you to think about and you'll be able to discuss that tomorrow. Okay, so good luck, have a great night.